What is up, everybody? I am here with Patrick. Uh, we'll let him go into exactly everything that he's doing here, but we're actually in the temporary office. The new office will be up in about, what, four to six weeks? Yeah, if that. Yep, All right. yep. construction's and, underway. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the new back office that I've been talking about for a little while now will be up basically by April 5th. Yep. So I'll let you go into that too. So I just want to kind of introduce Patrick because he manages everything here, team of 35 people. I'm really excited to really get this thing launched uh, and get it going. I know some of you have started, but I'll let you take it from here and kind of just give a little background on, on where we're at. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate the introduction, Phil. Um, you know, Phil and I have been working very closely together. I've had an opportunity to meet a few of you to this point and, and test on a few different transactions. Um, but, you know, to Phil's point, we're super excited to go live the first week of April. Uh, all the technology is in order. We technically could probably get going today. Uh, but with it being the last week of the month and in alternative lending, uh, the last week is always the busiest week. So we didn't want to, you know, get in the way and mess with any of the transactions that were taking place now. So we are going to be going live the first week of April here. And we're super excited to, to really kick this off and officially get the launch going. Uh, just a little bit about me and my team, just so you're aware of who we are. Uh, we've been doing this, you know, alternative lending options for over 15 years now. Uh, we've secured over a billion dollars in funding for small businesses across the country during that time. Um, we work the whole process start to finish, so it's totally streamlined. Uh, you guys can rely on us from contacting the client, setting expectation, collecting the necessary documents, and then obviously managing all of the lender relationships. Uh, that's really the most key component to what we do are those lender relationships. Um, you know, we've been cultivating and establishing these relationships for the past, like I mentioned, 10 to 15 years. Uh, and this allows us to get longer terms, better offers, higher dollar amounts, lower cost uh, than other brokers that are out there, uh, simply because, you know, we've established these relationships for over 10 years. But more importantly, uh, is the volume that we produce through these relationships. Uh, we're originating about $20 million a month in unsecured uh, business funding. Uh, so we have the capacity um, and the relationships to, you know, give your clients the white glove service that they deserve and need uh, and ultimately convert at a super high level for uh, for the network here. Yeah, one thing I just want to say is that just so everyone is no, uh, just so you guys get, I don't take a dime off any of your deals. I know a lot of people think that they're, I'm taking away from you guys. All I'm doing is connecting you to a back end that will just do everything for you. So I don't take a dime off of your commissions and a lot of people think that I so you know James so mm -hmm. I was talking to James uh, and Patrick here a few weeks uh, probably a couple months ago at this point and I said mm -hmm. what do you say to somebody that says you know why would I work with you guys uh, you know I, I can I can outperform you or anything like that and he said well, I forget exactly what he said I think he said like prove it or something like that like yeah. do it. you know if you, if you think you can do better see this is what everyone needs to understand mm -hmm. These guys have a big infrastructure, okay? Like you say, a billion dollars in uh, funding overall, 20 million a month. They're closing deals every single day. Every day. All I wanna do is connect you guys to get you everything in place so you can get your deals funded. Um, the long term for me is always to make your life easier to close as many deals as you can. So, so your goal is to just generate leads get those packages in, right, depending on how you're doing it, and then you can spend more time marketing and getting the deal flow in and let all the, the harder work, you know, dealing with lenders. I mean, how long does it take you to get, you know, a relationship, like a true good relationship? I know you say, hey, I, I you, you just actually called somebody while I was here and got something removed Absolutely. that the average person, what, what, what was it, what just happened? Yeah, so exactly, that's a great point. So this is the biggest value that we provide, like I mentioned, is managing these relationships. I will give you the names to all of my lenders. You can go reach out to all of them. The work that goes into managing that process and handling the lenders, all of the paperwork, all of the deals, is going to take away from your core business, which is generating leads and, and, and being in marketing, right? right? So leverage us the best way you can. And the example that Phil's talking about is uh, we've recently had a lead come in from the network, uh, and this deal had been basically getting held up because the lender's looking for financials, right? Uh, it's over a $100,000 loan, and typically when it's over 100K unsecured, you're gonna have to submit some type of a profit and loss or a balance sheet, some type of financials, tax return, uh, to get the level of comfort with the, with the lender where they need to be to you know, uh, actually deploy the capital to the borrower. Now this deal's been sitting uh, for a couple days because one of the final stipulations is to produce a profit loss and balance sheet. 
a lot of small business owners don't have their accounting or paperwork in order there. A lot of small business owners are owner operator. You know, they're the chef in the restaurant. They're the guy swinging the hammer in the construction company. So they're not always being able to work on their business as much as they're working in their business. Um, so for the typical broker, they would have to produce this profit loss and balance sheet in order to get the deal funded. Phil came in to visit me today. We're talking about this deal. All I simply did was call up the lender who I have a relationship with personally for 10 years. We are very, very close. And I said, hey, listen, you know you know who we are. We're a trusted source. We've done a lot of business with you in the past. This client legitimately does not have the financials. Their accountant is working on it, but it's not here today. We can keep on sitting on this deal and potentially lose it out of the client no longer being interested or somebody else coming in and stealing the comp you know, a, a competitor coming in and, and stealing the deal. Uh, or we can make an exception, right? And for us, they were willing to make that exception and they totally are just now looking in the other direction and they're not requiring those financials to be submitted in order to get that deal funded. So again, I'll give you a list of all of my lenders. You can go and sign up with all of them. Everyone's able to do that. That's not the trick of the trade. It's the relationships and the process that we have established with these lenders where you can now button up to us, leverage those relationships, leverage those processes, and allow us to just take it, the ball and run with it. And you can stay focused on what your core business is and that's generating deal flow, pass it into us and earn handsomely. And to echo what Phil's saying, absolutely. The, the, the biggest deal that Phil worked out with me uh, was on behalf of his brokers and his network that we would be splitting the, the, the comp between the two of us. And he asked um, me, so how much do you want? And I said, nothing. He'd be like, are you sure? <laughs> it, you know, there's, you know, you're in this business for a reason, right? I'm in this business for a reason. There, you know, you're able to earn a good living on, um, you know, obtaining financing for business owners. And I had just naturally figured he's putting all this effort into establishing this network that you would want to be involved in a transaction. Um, but like I stay focused on my core business, which is funding deals. Phil wants to stay focused on his core business, which is training loan brokers to generate deal flow, generate leads. Um, and you know we're just going to both do what we're really good at and ultimately try to bring the best service back to the network as we can. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, some people say, Oh, uh, you know, I, I want to make the whole thing. Why would I give you, you know, fifty percent of the profits? Um, and I say, Yeah, but do you really want to be on a phone for twelve hours a day, building all this stuff up, taking the next six months to a year to build these relationships, like you just said, or let somebody else do the legwork for you, who can get deals done that you can't get done, who right. can, like you just said, a regular broker may not just have that happen sit on it and lost a deal because yes. it sat around for a week or two because the business owner just can't do it. If someone asked me for my profit loss, whatever, I don't have that crap. Yeah. Right? I'd be and like, most don't. And I'm not going to go do it. And I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll just go try to find somebody else who mm -hmm. will get past it. So that just that's one little example. I know a lot of examples just being around where the right people get the job done. You know, before I know um, last year we got a deal done with someone. Actually, this guy, John, who started, John Tobin, Actually, I have an interview with him. He made 24K on his first deal. Okay. But he could have made 40. But he didn't realize it. Because he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. He got lucky on a 24. But then he realized, he goes, shit, I could have made 40. If you guys do it, I would have, I would have pulled in even more money. Yeah. So, so there's always that type of thing. And one other thing I want to say, like you just said, you know, the relationships. So some of the people I sell leads to, they obviously work with, right? Because I sell the lenders. They work with lenders. We work on a different level. So there's companies that I sell leads to that I know for a fact that if anybody called them, they would never buy leads from you, right? They're only mm -hmm. buying leads from me because of who I am and the relationship I have. I've met them in person. I went down to their office. You know what I mean? I've had that relationship for years. Right. There's no way someone's going to, even if it's cheaper. I've had people literally, companies tell me, oh, yeah, this other guy tried to sell me leads even cheaper than you, but I'm good. Because I don't know how good those leads are. They're probably crap. Who knows? Because the majority of people that do this stuff is crap. Yep. You know, and it's hard to find solid people. One other thing I'll say, I've been, I, I basically started working with you guys, I think in 2017 is when yep. I first met you. Yep. This one thing I'll say, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. Now, number one, I was trying to work, build some of that locally to me, right? So it's, I can come down here, we can get more content, figure out what's going on. I can be on top of this stuff myself. Yep. Um, you know, we're going to get you know, the rest of the team involved over time. Um, but out of any company I've ever dealt with, and we were just talking about this too, that to be, to a lot of these shops or whatever you want to call these, these brokerage houses or whatever, they're just, they're not ran great. They're not ran like a company. It's just like a bunch of people trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And 
it's kind of like wild, wild west. And you guys have been the most on time, like the most structured, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you knew every single stat. You could say, oh, hold on, I'll give you stats. There's no other company I ever sold these to that can literally tell me down to the dime on how much money you made off of my leads. Yeah. I sent you the exact conversion rate. It's mm -hmm. like, they're just, they're like, yeah, just keep sending us leads. Like, we're making money. Right. That, that's usually what I would hear. Um, but explain like the structure of the company. Like, you yeah. know, just you know, 35 people. How is it all yep. Yep. figured out? Absolutely. And, and what you're pointing out right now is why a lender, right, would waive a final stipulation like somebody's financial for us. It's because of what you're saying. The way we've run our business, we treat it like an actual business. The lenders know that. They've come, they've sat down with us, they've visited, they've visited our office, they've talked and worked with our team, we've had dinner together. Um, so when the lender is waiving a stipulation like that, they're not doing it for the client. They're not because they have a level of trust with the client. It's the level of trust with our company. Right. The fact that that lender knows that we're not going to educate that borrower to do anything negative with the funding or commit any type of fraudulent activity, obviously. Um, the lender knows that we're not gonna go stack them three ways you know, to Sunday and, and obviously put their advance at risk. Our lenders want our team to win the deal because of the trust that they have built with right. us over the years and knowing that we run this like a real business. And they want more business out of you. And they want more business. The structure here is, you know, we have jokes in the company, we have processes for our processes. Um, it's the only way that we can ensure that whether it's a partner of ours or a borrower, that their experience with us is always a pleasant experience is by having it to be a very diligent process and every step of the way of control. Um, so when a lead comes into our company, we immediately have a, a um, what we call the phone answering team, but it's more than just answering the phone. It's monitoring the inboxes and the CRM as leads are pouring in. Um, every lead hits a team first where that team then makes sure that everything is coded in the CRM correctly. That's important back for you guys to know that because when you do generate a lead and it comes into our company, you want to make sure that lead's being tied back to you. So that if that lead does turn out to be successful and funded, you want to make sure that you're being compensated for it. Right. So the first layer is get that lead into our team so that we can make sure that everything in the system is set up and coded properly. From there, it's assigned to a dedicated business consultant who is then responsible for communicating with the client, setting expectations, understanding what the use of funds is, how this is going to help the business, uh, collecting all of the necessary documentation. From there, it goes to a deal review team that will actually, we have technology that reads all of our bank statements for us automatically, so we can package a deal and submit it within 30 minutes because we have very sophisticated technology that will literally read a bank statement, uh, summarize the entire statement, and then basically we have a lender matching technology that we built ourselves and have tweaked over the years that will literally identify the perfect lenders based on that particular business, which makes sense. Um, once we identify those lenders, we then get a production coordinator involved. Uh, this is a team of, of girls here that get assigned to every file and they handle all the communication back and forth with the lender so that the sales guys can stay focused on calling the client, staying in touch with the deals, as well as updating the partners. And they don't have to get really pulled into the back and forth with our lenders. We let our production coordinators handle that. We've also found that to be extremely helpful because lenders make mistakes, right? Underwriters are human beings, so sometimes they'll miss things. Uh, this is another benefit of a company who's structured properly. If you're working with some fly-by-night broker and they submit a deal, a lender makes a mistake, maybe they decline the deal on accident or they come in with a very reserved offer, our production coordinators are trained on all of the lender guidelines so we can almost expect what type of an approval we should get back. If the offer or the decline comes back and it's not what we were expecting, we'll then dive in and start to push back at the lender and say to the lenders, like, we'll teach them their guidelines back to them. We'll say, hey, based on your guidelines and your scoring model, this deal should have qualified for X amount more in approval or X amount of more months in a, in a term. Um, so by having that structured team out, we are now pushing back and we're getting better offers or even turning declines into offers so we can keep the deal alive. Uh, and then from there, it gets back to the sales rep. They would obviously communicate these decisions back to the borrowers. 
uh, and ultimately, you know, then at that point, collect final stipulations, go into funding, um, and then once the deal is funded, we have all sorts of back office teams that go in to make sure everything's buttoned up correctly, paid out correctly, uh, and then obviously a dedicated renewals team that is going to work on all these clients to ensure that they stay in our web and we continue to fund them as time goes on, uh, as well as a dedicated partnership team. Um, so your clients will have dedicated points of contact. You'll be able to work and talk to um, the sales representatives that's working with your client to get updates on the actual deals. But you'll also have a point of contact on our partnership team that will be able to give you updates on your relationship with our company. What's going on with your commissions? How much have you earned? What's going on with the deals that you've referred? And then just as an added layer of support and transparency to that, on top of like the dedicated points of contact, um, would be your access to our portal where you could log into that portal, get real-time updates, see all the deals that you've submitted into us, uh, and then resources as well within that portal where we're gonna have co-branded marketing material that you could adapt and send out to your client base to help generate more leads. Um, so there's a lot of resources, a lot of checkpoints, a lot of processes that are built out to ensure that everybody that applies with us is communicated to, followed up with, submitted to the proper lenders, and ultimately presented the best options and funded, and that your commissions are paid out immediately, uh, accurately, on time, every time. Um, we ourselves have you know, a few thousand active referral partners that refer business to us on a monthly basis, and you know, to sum this all up, jump on Google, jump on Trustpilot, check out our reviews. We have hundreds of reviews, five-star rating. Um, we do the right thing by everybody that we come across, and it's why we have the relationships with the lenders that we do. It's because of the, um, the reputation that we were able to establish by how we go about this business. Um, we're best in class, and, and, and we're not afraid to say that, and the proof is in the pie, it's out there. Do the research, see it for yourself. Uh, we are, you know, what we're good at is working capital and helping business owners obtain alternative lending options. 70% of small businesses don't even know alternative lending exists. Um, and that's why we're out here partnering with networks like this to bring awareness to these business owners and then ultimately giving them a white glove experience on ensuring that they are getting matched with the best lenders that are out there and obtaining the best terms in loans for their business. Right. So at the end of the day, you're gonna close more deals than somebody would on their own. Absolutely. You're gonna get higher deal amounts than somebody would on their own, on yep. average. Yep. So that's why I always tell everybody, you're gonna make all that money back in volume. So mm -hmm. these guys can handle, you wanna send them 50 packages a day, 100 packages a day, they can handle it, you can't, right? So let them do, do the legwork, it's already built out, make that money back in volume. See, when I was selling leads at first, people would say to me all the time, no man, work with us, give us your leads, you'll make more money by us closing deals on your, on your leads. I'm like, no you won't, because I can sell a thousand leads a day, mm -hmm. 2,000 leads a day, right? I'll make that money back in the volume that I would try to you know, make more on each deal. Mm -hmm. I'd rather make less and make it back in volume. Right. Right, so it's the same concept, uh, it's just doing it you know, with, with one company all day long that's already built out. One thing I'll tell you, when I first met you, mm -hmm. it was so painful for me on how detailed you were and everything. Because remember, you used to be like, all right, so let's look at your leads and now let's try to figure out how I can get better leads and this and the other thing. I was like, dude, I just sell them like one way, right? That's it. That's the only way. No, no, well, let's do this. I wanted to fucking kill you. No <laughs> joke. So, I'm sure. But now today, I'm like, thank God you're like that because for this thing, this is better, right? right. I mean, out of anybody I've ever worked with, you guys have always converted the highest level yep. of the lead flow, and there's a reason why. Yep. Um, so now when it comes to this thing, uh, like I said, I want to find someone local, I want to find someone I already knew, mm -hmm. and once the new office is up and running, you know, we'll look at maybe having an event here. Um, so, so actually, the building that we are in right now is the same building I have my web hosting company in, so it's been a long time since I've been here. That was 2005, <laughs> this kind of brings back a lot of memories. I was telling them some stories, how I used to sleep here and have like parties and security guards. We put a hole in the wall once in a hallway. Yep, we took yep. someone's, I took someone's way back and I ran them into the wall and it went right through. <laughs> <laughs> so security hated us. But I had, uh, we had about 12,000 square foot. It was all servers, just servers and servers. We had raised floor because the AC would go under the floor and all that stuff. So, but yeah, we, uh, that, we had a lot of good times in my, in my early 20s uh, in this building. 
But um, so it's kind of weird just being back here right now. That used to there was no buildings back there, no houses. Yeah, all the new condo yeah, complexes. Yeah, it was basketball court. I used to tell you we used to play uh, wiffle ball in the yep. right where the Verizon building used to be. All gotcha. in the back corner. Okay. There's massive ceilings back there. It used to be before it's built out for Verizon, but now the Verizon's gone. I think, right? Yeah, I see the signs out there, but yeah, I yeah. haven't seen them yet. Oh, we used to T-Mobile now, I think. Okay, yeah, we used to yeah. sneak in and play wiffle ball. Yeah, security hated us, man. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I remember the food being somewhat okay. I don't know. Yeah, the, the cafeteria. The cafeterias. Yep. But this is a shitty area to get out and. Yeah, you're on a highway here. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But anyway, it's tough. so but we will have a. Um, we we'll looked at having some stuff here. Uh, you'll have like almost like a home base, if you will, uh, to kind of do things, bring you guys in house, meet the team, understand you know everything that's going on. Obviously, help you guys as much as possible. Uh, but it's going to be cool just having it local today yeah. because if it's not local, it's so hard for me to really kind of bring everybody you know inside. You yeah. know, so we'll, we'll eventually get a whole picture of the team, a whole yeah. line. You know, we'll we'll get all that going. But like you said, you know, April fifth. Uh, Drop dead date. Drop dead. We're if, if it doesn't happen, I'll give you his phone number. Come see me call. directly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, but April fifth is a drop dead date. And again, the reason why is they don't want to implement this in the last week of the month because the way they have to move data over to the new system and right. you know they, they obviously just want to focus on closing deals and not screw anything up. So absolutely. So that's the reason why. Uh, and that's actually the date I'm going to Flor uh, Vegas for our Vegas event. So if anybody wants to attend, that's April eighth and ninth. And, uh, but uh, I'll probably be drunk, actually, by the time you guys start getting things up and ready. So, but anyway. I'll be worry. here working on your deals. He'll be here working on your deals <laughs> yeah, on in Vegas. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, anyway, it's going to be good. I appreciate you making this video. Yep. Uh, just kind of give everybody a little bit more insight on, on what we're doing here and why we're doing it and just trying to provide as much value as possible. And uh, and I think that we're, we're on the right path. I mean, you're already closing deals. I'm yeah, absolutely. Skull. So yeah, absolutely. deals are already being closed. It's happening. I met some of the actual people working on deals and stuff it's all lined up but again we won't worry about making a video of the office yet because the new office will be up and running in uh, the next month or so yep um and then what right below here uh actually it's on the same floor it's right next oh, okay door. yep oh, right, right, next next door. Door. All right. right next door yep cool all right any last words? Uh, just look forward to working with everybody. You know, we're uh, we're set up a little bit different than a direct lender. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into working with the direct lenders. One, they only offer one product. So if you're working with one lender and they don't like your client or the client doesn't like their product, you're kind of you're tapped out from there. Uh, so we have access to many programs, but many lenders for each program. The way that we're structured and set up is, you know, we provide a lot more resource and support than a direct lender, so we can help you take a deal from start to finish. And our partners are primarily people who are in finance, right? Think about that, right? So people who are in finance, this is what they do on a day-to-day -day business, but maybe it's a different style of finance. So instead of them trying to now take on all of these new lenders, all of these new products, all of these new relationships, manage all of this, they just stay focused on what they're good at, their core product, whether that's SBA equipment. And again, these are, these are actual people in loan brokering, in finance. Um, that are still leveraging us because they don't want to have to manage all of that and take away from their core business. Um, so nothing different here. Stay focused on your core business. Keep doing what you're good at. And, you know, hey, why not, right? Me and my team for the past 15 years have been pouring blood, sweat, and tears to formalizing lender relationships, making sure we have a marketplace that covers all of the gaps in, in alternative lending, um, and then building out and training a team that runs a streamlined, efficient process why not just bolt up next to that, take advantage of it, leverage us. Uh, we can handle the volume, and we're, we're here to close your deals for you. So super excited to work together. Oh, man. Excited. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right, man. Yep, super excited. Talk Thank to you guys. guys. Later.